Researchers mapped a brain and even found regions that we didn't know existed before. If you thought that when they mapped a fly's brain that was impressive, you're looking at the most complex model ever generated. That is a mouse's brain, a mammalian brain. They found over 13,000 regions and even discovered some that were previously unknown. This used an AI. This is probably some of the better uses of AI. It is chat GPT-like, but they even mapped cell-cell connections. We're talking about millions of minute connections and how they communicate with each other to create a realistic model of a brain. There's a ridiculous number of ways that this could be used. It could be used for AI to create a network for which an AI operates. It could create true intelligence, creating a scale model of a brain to operate on. We do already know that neuromorphic AIs, the ones that are designed to act like our own brains, work better when they have lobes. Imagine mapping out an entire brain and operating from that framework. That is possible. That is one way, but I'm more excited about the concept of creating synthetic nerves and crafting that into a nervous system. Synthetic nerves that are so similar to our own that they can interface with them and operate in a biological environment. That, I think, is where true intelligence is going to come from, but I've been wrong before. This might be it. This kind of technology is also useful because it can create a virtual system for which you can explore experimentation without actually using a living creature. Of course, it's also very useful in medicine. We can map our own brains. We can understand our brains. We can understand connections or syndromes that we didn't even know existed before because apparently we weren't even aware that the domain existed before. This kind of progress is foundational. When something like this comes up, it's going to spur entire new fields. This is something that we couldn't have even dreamed would be possible a few short years ago. It's too much information. It's too complicated. AI is bad at a lot of things, but this is one thing it's good at. Finding patterns faster than any person could have done. I guess it's also kind of good at convincing people it's sentient. But this could be the path to creating actual sentient AI neuromorphic brain modeling. The reason that I think having physical neurons crafted into something that can do computation like our brains is going to be the real path to intelligence is because we know that neurons, even artificial ones, use less power than traditional computation. It takes an enormous amount of power to even be able to operate a computer to do regular LLM stuff. This is why people have touted brain organoids, so the tiny human brains you can grow in a literal jar if you want to as the path forward, because it uses less power, much like our brains don't use all that much power relative. They do take up like 20% of the calories we eat in a day. If you have questions on why you feel so burnt out after working all day, there's actually good physiological reasons, but I don't have to talk about it here. So I don't think that simply modeling a brain is going to get us to real intelligence, not on a traditional computer system, even though it is possible. We have the largest neuromorphic computers in the world that only have about a million neurons. This model that they made for a mouse's brain has millions. Of course, it's not ready to be used as an AI, but it is, like I said, foundational. One question I would like to pose is if we could theoretically map our entire brains and create an AI that functions just like our brain, could you then take it farther than what a human is capable of? Could you create something that is more intelligent than a person? Of course, there is a long way to go before we get there, but I do wonder if it's possible. And if it's not possible now, will it be possible? And of course, if you needed a fun fact, researchers have also found out that you learn foreign languages before you are born. If you are exposed to foreign languages prior to birth, you will have the same pathways activated when you hear that foreign language in addition to your parents. So you may have actually lost out on not being exposed to foreign languages, not just when you were a child, but prior to being a child, which is kind of lame, but it's interesting.